What's up guys, this is Michael Lurus bringing you game 3 between Evil Geniuses and No Tidehunter playing on the Radiant and Dire respectively. We're going to have the third game right here, even though I already just said that. I'm still trying to get in the uh, groove of casting once again. So this cast, much like the last one, are going to be incredibly shitty. Uh, so, if you don't want to watch it, that's fine by me. Anyway, we do have some bands coming out now. Or, bands already came out, I guess. See, that's what I'm talking about, that, like, shittiness. Um, but we are going to see some more responsive bands, rather than the uh, generic bands. Of course, the responsive bands are based off of what the other teams used previously. So they're kind of a little bit of both. No Tidehunter did have the Bat Hunt, the, the Bat Rider last game. They decided to ban it out. Magnus, of course, not making it through the pool. This game is from a while ago, so this is when Magnus's skewer was uh, ridiculously overpowered. Evil Genius is going to ban out the Undying, one of the most powerful heroes in this current stage of Dota, as well as the Bounty Hunter. The Bounty Hunter played by Admiral Bulldog last game gave No Tidehunter really their uh, ability to get back into the game. Evil Geniuses were very, very far ahead, but the track gold just kept piling up, and No Tidehunter, with that Bounty Hunter, got through to the victory with a incredibly farmed Gyrocopter, which was uh, always a treat to see, I guess. No Tidehunter going to pick up the Darkseer, as well as the Sven. Darkseer was on the Evil Geniuses side before, but as was the Sven in Game 1. In Game 1, EG's fear completely tore apart Tidehunter. This Sven is uh, pre-nerf, or I guess post-buff and pre-nerf, so this is when Sven was uh, really the uh, kill-everything type of hero. Not so much anymore, but uh, we're still going to see that from no Tidehunter, so they have picked up their primary carry. EG, going to go straight for the Life Stealer, as well as the Beastmaster. Kira Lifestealer Beastmaster for Evil Geniuses. Already picking up two melee heroes, so they gotta watch out about that. And I know Titan picked up two melee heroes as well, but you know, Darkseer in lane kind of functions as a ranged hero. He has the attack range of a melee hero with the lane control of a ranged hero. But EG, they're going to pick up the Lifestealer in response to the Sven. I don't know how much I like this. Of course, Sven is going to have his Stormbolt cancelled out by the Rage, so no stuns there. But once those two get into a slugfest, I'm not sure if Lifestealer is going to steal enough life from Sven before Sven steals enough life away from the Lifestealer. Uh, Sven's damage is just a lot more straightforward, a lot more uh, bursty, I want to say. Combined with the fact that he will have that Warcry bonus armor means that Lifestealer probably not going to be the best at dueling the Sven when it comes right down to it. Of course, EG do have some pretty good... Uh, crowd control effects, they have the roar from Beastmaster, and a whole slew of slows. So they could be looking to uh, go aggressive on the Sven, hopefully try to get him killed before he does all the killing. Once the Sven gets a BKB though, uh, it's going to be a little more difficult, Beastmaster will go through that with his roar, but Lifestealer will have a lot of his damage denied from him once the BKB has come up from the Sven, so I don't know if Evil Geniuses will be able to handle the Sven with this Lifestealer pick. Of course, Lifestealer not exactly the best hero against the Darkseer, because Surge is pretty good against open wounds. It completely cancels it out, pretty much, so uh, it's going to be a little bit of a pain there. No Tidehunter even going to pick up the Lone Druid. Now, Lone Druid and Lifestealer have a kind of weird interaction. Uh, Lone Druid's Entangle does go through Rage, but Lifestealer does damage based off of your HP. And Lone Druid has a ton of HP, both on him and the bear. So, oftentimes you will see the Life Sealer being picked in response to a Lone Druid, since, hey, this guy's a lot of health, L Life Sealer is a perfect anti tank, I might as well pick the Life Sealer to kill the Lone Druid. But then on the other side, Lone Druid, in a sense, kind of counters Life Sealer as well, because if you get entangles, Life Sealer's damage is going to drop down to zero. I guess a little bit to the bear, but it's kind of a counter to Life Sealer. So, the heroes do have a very weird interaction. No Tidehunter will get a lot of lane control from that pickup. Most likely is going to be, uh, I don't know, mid laning, probably. Uh, Darkseer, hard lane, Sven, probably going to need some protection to get his farm. Possibly an aggressive tri lane. You can see that being denied from Evil Geniuses, the Rubik. Played by Eternal Envy last game. Had some pretty big ult ultimate steals. This game, there's not as many huge things to steal. Roar is still very useful, it goes through Lifestealer if you pick that up, but it doesn't even matter because he's not going to be 
in this game. But no Tidehunter have opened up the game with three uh, three very bulky heroes. That's going to be pretty good for Life Stealer, except for the fact that uh, the, all those bulky heroes could kill Life Stealer equally as fast. So it's really going to be a race to see who could kill who faster. No Tidehunter will also have a lot of damage coming out from the current lineup. They're going to be looking for support heroes, which is why you see Evil Geniuses banning out the Rubik. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Keeper of the Light ban or something like that as well. Between the Lone Druid and the Sven, they'll have a lot of uh, killing power. Their pushing isn't too bad either. Get the bear on the front lines, put an Ion Shell on it, which is very, very, which is a very strong combination. EG's turn to ban. And then Evil Geniuses are going to be forced back by a very, very spiky bear. It's going to be difficult for them if no Tanner decide to push. Otherwise, they could just opt to farm instead, and with Lone Druid and Sven, Evo Geniuses are going to need a little bit more damage if they want to combat no Tidehunter in the late game. They could choose to put the pressure on early. Life Stealer could opt to a very early armlet, not go for Hand of Midas or anything like that, and then you know, Evo G could make an early push, in which case it would probably look towards a little bit more of a pushing lineup. Something like an Enigma would be pretty good for them. More bans coming out. The Wisp ban from No Tide Under denying that Life Sealer Wisp combination. Uh, you could uh, tether the Wisp to anyone, really, and then have the Life Sealer pop into the Wisp. Then it's like a three man tether uh, relocate. Pretty vicious. That's not going to be seen unless we see a Nature's Prophet, which uh, it's still kind of a weird combination, but uh, EG going to have their final ban be the Shadow Demon. So no Tidehunter's picks of the support heroes are getting slimmer and slimmer. Of course, Keeper of the Light still in the pool, so we are most likely going to see that from them unless EG are going to pick that one up themselves. EG do have the kind of cute combination of Beastmaster, Hawk, and Life Sealer. So they could be very aggressive with that, actually. They get Shakira with the long range disable and have uh, Beastmaster and Life Sealer team up to have a pretty vicious ganking party. That'll be what they are looking to do if they do in fact want to put the pressure on to No Tide Hunter early. The ban, final ban for No Tide Hunter, gonna be that Enigma. Very smart ban, denying that jungle hero. Of course, Chen and Enchantress still in the pool. Also, wouldn't be bad pickups for Evil Geniuses. Beastmaster, where are you gonna go? Usually, Beastmaster is like a hard lane here, that's what people think of it. But he wouldn't be too bad in the mid lane. No Tide Hunter probably gonna lane the Lone Druid there unless they pick up something kind of strange like a Queen of Pain, in which case their lanes will be very very cluttered and either Lone Druid or Darkseid will be forced into the jungle. So that's a situation that neither of them really like to be in. Uh, Darkseid usually does jungle for you know one or two levels, get a couple of points of Ion Shell, and yes, Evil Geniuses there are they're gearing up to push early. Lashrak of course is just a very solid support hero overall, but I do think that uh, they're going to look to put on some early pressure. Of course, their final pick will reveal if that truly is the case. Still need another hero for a solo lane. Let's assume Beastmaster mid, assume an, a tri lane, and then, hey, you need someone else. No Tide Hunter, their lanes. Well, their lanes are pretty much accounted for. They still just need the support heroes. Their list is uh, a little bit smaller now, but it's going to be Keeper of the Light. EG's turn to pick. Trying to deny that push coming out from Evil Geniuses. The push isn't going to be mainly from uh, you know summoning things, Nature Prophet style or Enigma style. It's going to be just clearing off the creep waves and then you know relying on your own creep wave to do the damage. That's where Keeper of the Light really shines. Get it? Get it? Keep light. Okay, okay. It's actually going to be a Broodmother from Evil Geniuses. That is very, very peculiar. Even after the Keeper of the Light pick. Keeper of the Light is a pretty good counter to Broodmother. More Spiderlings equals more food for the horses. That is going to be their long lane pick, Evil Geniuses. I feel like with the setup that no Tidehunter have right now, it would be more beneficial for EG to have picked up something like a Windrunner. Get another stun, deny that uh, right click damage from Sven with the wind run. You also don't have that uh, huge amount of spiderling fodder being fed towards the ion shell, the cleave, or the illuminate. So I'm not really sure how much I like this broodmother pick. It is probably going to be a hard lane pick. Just going to force Beastmaster into the mid lane. 
Or that might be a little bit too predictable. If no Tide Hunter catch wind of that, they'll be sure to put the Keeper of the Light there. It's going to be a Shadow Shaman for the last pick for no Tide Hunter. Going to get that support up. They also uh, would like to have those disables. Having only one reliable table onto the Sven. They need a couple more. And if they get to get the jump onto the Life Sealer, that's going to be their means of locking him down. Aside from uh, the occasional entangle, I suppose. You know, Tide Hunter have picked up a solid lineup. Lots of bulk on their team. Squishy supports in the back. Their pushing is not too bad either, so we're going to see uh, maybe a little bit of aggression coming out from both of these teams early on. Of course, not, no Tide Hunter do have the option of running themselves into the late game with just defensive play. That's where Keeper of the Light is also pretty good. Just being defensive, denying any sort of push from the EG squad. Because the only summons they have are going to die in one hit to an Illuminate. So EG, I do think it's a little bit up to them. With Lone Druid, played by Admiral Bulldog, his signature hero. Plus Sven, played by Loda. It's going to be really, really rough in the late game. Unless EG get a lot done in the early game. S4 is going to be playing the Dark Seer. Eternal Envy is on the Shadow Shaman, and Aki is going to cap off the No Tide Hunter lineup. On the EG side, we have Demon heading towards the mid lane, looking like he's going to opt for some early, early bottle play. Fear is going to be playing that hard carry life sealer, supported by Beatus, once again on the Jakiro and Jo heading towards the bot lane. And of course, leaves Melk to the Lashrac. You can see Demon. Already prepping up for the mid lane pull. Let's see if they could get that done. I'm not sure if this is the patch where uh, mid lane pulling is easy or not. Or if they like made it more difficult. Are they going to go for Roshan? They have three salves, four salves. Now they're just checking Roshan. Okay. <laughs> the lone druid on the other end. Gotta be wary. But Roshan is not being attempted right now. Looks like it is going to be an aggressive tri lane for EG. And Broodmother onto this bot lane is going to go up against Admiral Bulldog. Admiral Bulldog already has purchased up some sentry wards, so he is going to have a decent time on that bot lane. Meanwhile, on the top lane, it's going to be a 3v3. Could I actually, like, use one of these? That'd be cool. I would like to have some, uh, Bastion announcer. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And we're going to have a level 1 engagement right now. Lodo getting opened up with the open wounds. Of course, he's going to fly out. Hit onto B. There's a lot of damage onto him. Split Earth is going to land onto Lodo as Fear. Trying to do as much damage as he can. Lodo should be fine from this. Does have a salve. And Aki is doing a little bit of body blocking as well. Jakiro a little bit off to the left, so he can't get the ice path onto Aki unless he bends towards the left. He is going to go for it. B. Diz. Where's the ice path? It's not going to happen. Melk does have a split Earth again, but he's not going to try to cast it. There's a little bit of damage done by the EG side. Regeneration rune. Cancelled, picked up. Life Sealer picked it up. Didn't really need it, but now he's at full mana again. I'm pretty sure that uh, little engagement is a precursor of things to come. Sentry Ward blocking off that camp. No, it's not. It's a defensive camp. It's a defensive ward. What am I saying? Oh no, Aki in trouble once again. Malk is there with the split earth. Should hit. Has to hit. Aki is juking around. Ice Path is going to miss. And Aki is going to be fine because Malk held onto the spell. No, it's not going to be fine because Malk has a really this long range. Well There's the first blood being drawn by the Lashrac. As EG's aggressive tri lane so far starting off pretty well. Mid lane is going to be the Darks here. S4 versus the Beastmaster. S4 should have a very, very nice time here. The Beastmaster will use his axes and try to get his bottle up. Actually, he already does have his bottle up, so. Uh, do both heroes have their bottle? Yeah, both heroes have their bottle. Constant ion shells, but it's going to be a little bit difficult to keep those ion shells alive when those axes are up. And it looks like Beastmaster, the first opt for two points called Wild. Let's see if he's going to get a little bit of inner beast or if he's going to opt for more wild axes, get some more direct burst push. Bot lane, Jo is going to be going up against Admiral Bulldog so far. Fairly even lane. Don't expect much to happen from this lane. If anything's going to happen, it's going to happen up here. You have a little bit of engagement horses as well as the Stormhammer. Just trying to jack some creeps. But I do like EG's lane just a little bit better. Loda could open up with a Stormhammer following up with an Illuminate. The Shadow Shaman is a little bit too far away, doing the double stacking and pulling. Denying that creep wave almost entirely. No, Aki, gotta watch out, man. He's gonna have his clarity dispelled. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse. 
and B Diz as well as Melk. Making sure that no Tide Hunter have no space on this top lane. Lotus still finding his farm, however. Fear not with the most CS, although uh, knowing Fear, he's gonna get that in very, very little time indeed. And Fear does have that one point of rage, so if he sees a storm hammer coming towards him, at least he could dodge out of that. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, allow for no time to get a little bit aggressive. Although I do think EG have a much better aggressive situation over here. They're going to be handicapped a little bit by the fact that they don't have any uh, pull opportunities, but I don't think it'll matter to them too much. And Jo going strong onto Admiral Bulldog with quite a few Spiderlings as well. Admiral Bulldog going to drop to the Spiderlings. The poison damage, the hitting, just needs one more hit. You hero spider! Hero spider gets the kill by himself. We want the top lane. We do have another pull from the EG side. Let's see if Lotus is going to steal this one. Horses to fly. Hit onto Beedis and Malcolm. Pretty good damage there. It's only level 1 Illuminate. Keeper of the Light has hit the level 2 mark. Lota almost at the level 4 mark. An unexpected kill. J.O. should not have been able to get that kill onto Admiral Bulldog. The regeneration from the Broodmother proving to be very, very strong indeed. And well, unfortunately for no Tidehunter. The Broodmother is paired up against one of the only heroes that's not prepared to deal with an, an army of Spiderlings. They had Shadow Shaman solo the lane or something like that. Would, would be pretty messy, but the Shadow Shaman won't be getting his uh, tower pushed. Jo's holding on to his Spiderlings for now, however. But in the future, he will be pushing that very aggressively. It's going to try to force at least the Keeper of the Light, Aki, to come down there. And Loda, in a little bit of trouble, Ice Path is going to hit. Illuminate being charged up. Loda is going to try to run himself out of there with his War Cry. There's not enough damage. The stun is going on to fear. Unfortunately, Rage was not in time. Loda still taking a little bit of damage from the Edict. They're going to die the tower for this. Stick charges to keep him alive, however. Forces to fly once again, going to miss onto everything. Malk very, very weak at this point. Should be fine, however. Aki is out of mana, does not have another cannon to blast. That is going to be it for there. Meantime, S4 fighting Demon under the Tier 2 tower. When did that happen? What are you doing here, S4? That is, that is not where you want to be. Very, very odd situation. In the meantime, bot lane Admiral Bulldog once again getting pressured pretty hard by J.O. Now has his soul ring up. But Lone Druid has his Tranquil Boots, so he'll be able to manage somewhat once he gets that cancelled immediately by this army of Spiderlings. I do think that it would be best if Aki went down there pretty soon. They need that anti-push or else J.O. is going to get out of control. Mid lane S4 once again trying to go for a kill on Demon. This time not under a tier 2 tower. What a weird sight to see. A hero not trying to die the tier 2's at this stage in the game. And Bulldog, Bulldog has to be doing on farm. 20 for 2 for 2 versus 26 for 2. J.O. holding strong onto this lane. S4 though, he's doing pretty well in the mid lane versus Demon. As I said before, it's the melee range interaction, but there's the roar as well as teleportation support coming in from Malk. S4 is going to get shredded down by the Edict, kicked in the balls by the Beastmaster. I don't know why they added that animation for Beastmaster, but I love it. He just kicks things and it does as much damage from an axe swing. How does that make sense? I have no idea, but hey, it worked and S4 takes another death. 4-0 in favor of EG. J.O. trying to amass quite the army of spiderlings. Work down this uh, plasma field. Silly bear, you're not a plasma field. Might have some more action in the top lane. Sphere has been farming this entire time. 16 for 2, not the most farm I've seen on Fear. Loda's getting a lot more actually, but oh, not for long. Aki is opening up with the open wounds, and Loda actually wasted the storm hammer to farm creeps. Ice Path is going to land on Aki, and he is as good as dead. He is as good as dead. Run! Run, horse, run. Yeah, Edict doesn't care if you're hiding. It is going to buy time for Loda to teleport out of there. EG have been pretty good on this top lane about getting kills. What is that? That's uh, two kills happening on this top lane. It's kind of making up for Fear's uh, lack of farm. It's like now they actually just want to push the creep wave. Try to take this tower down and... Well, no one's here. Where did the horse guy go? He died and he's not teleporting back. He's holding on to his gold. This tower is going to take a lot of damage. Level 2 Edict, as Fear does hold on to the Creep Wave with that Stout Shield. With the Feast, he should be able to do so just fine. The tower is going to stay alive, at least for the moment, as all three of the No Tide Hunter Tri Lane can return back up here. Loda continuing his farm. He's got to watch out. EG have shown that they're not scared about looping around and you know doing a uh, Tier 1 Tower Dive. 
Aki as well as Eternal Envy have to be very, very wary about that. Of course, every time they do, uh, EG does do that, they have to worry about uh, actually getting a kill. If they don't get the kill, it's a lot of wasted time for fear. He's already falling behind as far as the farm goes. This is not the position you want to see your Naix in right now. Fifth from the bottom. Of course, the O. Got the tail end of that one. Lucky and Tangle by Admiral Bulldog. Returning the kill, and I missed that one too, but... Okay, stuff happening all over the map. Who would have thought? Tier 1 on the top lane got destroyed about the same time as Jay losing his life. 5 to 1, it's the first death happening on the EG side, but the tower is down. It's gonna mean that no Tidehunter's lane is going to be a lot more difficult. Demon, hiding in the tree, is gonna find Aki. Being hit by a storm hammer. here come the horses. Doing a little more damage to Demon, he does have that roar up his sleeve. Is he going to burn it? I don't think he is. Pig is slowing down Aki quite a bit. Is there enough burst damage? Level 3 axes should be enough to kill Aki. Roar, cancelled by the fog, or range, or something. That's going to be it. In the meantime, S4 with that ion shell pushing down the tier 1 mid tower. So a tower for a tower. Jo is starting to push down this bottom lane. And yes, now Aki is forced down here. Admiral Bulldog, is just, his hero is not equipped to deal with such a push. And a three-man smoke. Malk with the haste rune leading the way. Demon still has that roar. And he's, they're going to run straight into S4. Maybe? Yeah, here we go. S4 already used the surge. He's going to run the exact opposite way. How did he know that that was coming? Looks like it won't really matter. B is going to land that ice path. And there's the roar. S4, you are so dead, sir. Split Earth, axes, and the axe swipes as well. Killing off the darks here for the third time? Third time, yeah. Darks is pushing out the lane pretty well, handling the lane. But uh, when it comes right down to it, it's EG that's getting the kills. Two supports going to be rotating down to the bot lane. Maybe help Jo a little bit on this lane. But hey, Keeper of the Light's already here. There's not much that they could do. Where's the keeper light? There he is. Has his boots. And Hannah Midas up on the lone druid. Nine minute Midas, not bad. That hand of Midas and the uh, farm that Loda's getting. No Tide Hunter, despite having a five kill deficit, aren't doing too poorly. Let's see if they want to go in on this again. B Diz and Melk, not really doing much on the spot lane. Kind of just sitting in this uh, shadowy area. Putting some passive pressure on Bulldog, good. Lane's not really pushing that far down. We do have Demon rotating around as well, looking for the 10 minute rune. It's going to spawn on the top, it's going to be an illusion rune as well. Now Fear is going to continue farming, S4 not even going to head towards that direction. And Beatus and Malk still wasting a lot of time, just sitting in the jungle. Not going to matter all that much. Eternal Envy, as well as Aki, not much experience in gold on them. Although the Illuminate. We can do stuff like that. No push for the Broodmother. Not a chance. Illum that Illuminate denying a lot of uh, potential farm to Bulldog, killing off creeps when it, you know, you kind of want the Lone Druid to get the creeps. But, hey, to keep your tower alive, fire off those horses anytime you can. If you're still on this top lane, might see some rotation from Eternal Envy. Doesn't have his level 6 yet. The Stormhammer lands, they have a chance at killing this Life Sealer, but if not, they don't have a shot. S4, and Malk gonna run into each other. Does S4 see Malk? He does have a level 4 vacuum. Not gonna use it to pull Malk onto the high ground. S4 actually hiding right now is Fear and Malk. I don't think they can win a 2v3. Although with travels on the Beastmaster, this is something that no Tidehunter definitely did not expect. Here's the Feast Hawk. Do it. Do it. Uh, spotted out by the illusion of the Darkseer and that is going to be it. Could be a push however. Liquid Fire still not picked up by Beatis. Level 4 only on the Jakiro. With Malk with three points of that edict, they should be able to take down this tower. Aki is going to use the horses as best as he can to hold on to this tower. But the edict is there. And the horses are there too, but not onto the creep wave. This tower is going to take a little bit of damage. Fortification not yet up. Loda on the front lines looking for an opportunity to use the storm hammer. In the meantime, the bot lane, Jo still harassing back Admiral Bulldog. Getting himself quite a large sum of gold. Tower looks like it is going to be held for now. Loaded with the cleave, the ion shell, the horses. It's a lot of counter push from that no tide hunter have. Whereas EG they're pushing kind of relies on something to tank for the the for the edict. It's gotta be a creep wave, because well, I don't think Jo's leaving that bot lane anytime soon. 
And Life Stealer isn't nearly tanky enough to do that yet. Six to one as we hit the 12 minute mark. Gold earned. The advantage is pretty much zero. Experience earned surprisingly in favor of no Tide Hunter, actually. Would not have expected that. Let's see. XP per minute. Yeah, it's because Admiral Bulldog plus S4. Despite S4's deaths, they've been sticking in the lane very, very strong. Getting a lot of gold as well as experience there. Level 10 on the Dark Seer. 12 minutes in. Not bad. Even farming up some of the enemy spiderlings. And Admiral Bulldog has been pressured back, got killed once. But he's always been in experience range. Broodmother isn't the type of hero who could actually pressure a hero out there. Unless you're a very, very soft hero like Keeper or Shadow Shaman. The XP not going too poorly for no Tyne Enter at all. EGL, they have a 5 kill advantage, 1 tower in their. Uh, actually, the towers are even. Yeah, still quite an even game. Fear looking to open up on Loda. There's the rage from the Life Stealer, but nothing's going to happen out of that. Life Stealer going to have to tuck tail and run as Aki is coming up with uh, Eternal Envy. Horse is going to fly out. This guy is so dead. Fear continuing farm on this top lane. Gone for the Drums of Endurance. Fear is going to go for a very, very high movement speed based build. Now, probably going to work towards the uh, armlet. He has enough of the base stats. He has a lot of movement speed to keep catch up to his targets. Kind of needs to do that if he wants to uh, follow someone who has Surge on them. Or Warcry, or both. You need a lot of movement speed to do that. And they have a lot of disable, but it's not nearly enough. Not sure what happened to Demon. He got roughed up pretty badly in the jungle, I suppose. Bottom lane, we might see an engagement now onto Admiral Bulldog. We do have fear of all people teleporting down to the spot lane. Perhaps they just want to take this tier 1 tower down. Fear very, very far back. And there's the boots of travel coming in from the Beastmaster. It's going to open up with the war onto Admiral Bulldog. He did not see that one coming. Ice Path is going to land as well. Fear is in there as well. And Broodmother is going to take down the Lone Druid on the spot lane. Cannon Blast going to be armed, hit onto everyone, no one actually, they all move just in time. And this tower is in a little bit of danger, everyone from No Time is rotating down here, S4 with an invisibility rune, level 1 on that wall as well. But everyone from EG, they're not going to push the lane, they know that the Keeper of Light has too much anti pushing. beat is in a little bit of trouble, he did not leave the lane, and he's going to pay the price, Darkseer with the Ion Shell picking up that kill. I guess the, uh... Boots travel doesn't reveal the spiderlings when since they're invisible. Who knew? I knew that you could teleport to allied controlled units. I didn't know that they didn't reveal themselves. I feel like that's a little bit broken. And even oh, Jo picking up a hand of Midas also. A little bit later than uh, Bulldog, but still hand of Midas. And I did not see this. A huge, huge ancient stack being done by I believe Eternal Envy. Kind of been off the map for quite a while. Didn't really. Do much of anything this entire game except for stacking for Loda. He's going to get quite a lot of gold. That's Mythal Hammer if he wants it. Meantime, top lane. Broodmother does barely kill off the tower before S4 arrives. Two towers dropping very, very quickly for the EG squad as Loda is busy trying to farm up those ancients. He's now sitting on a huge pile of gold, but a lot of gold going the way of EG as well. Putting the gold lead in their favor, finally. Actually, not finally. It's been in their favor for a while now. And now Demon is housing a life sealer. Could go to the top lane possibly. Now he's just gonna chill around here. Maybe waiting for Aki to push up the lane a little bit. Aki a little bit smarter than that, however. Oh no, he's gonna use the boots of travel or attempt to at least. Not gonna fly. Demon rushing out the boots of travel, using it to gank very aggressively. The seventh before in the draft is what EG is capable of. It's also why the life school is going for the very early drums. Not the hand of Midas, which kind of delays his effectiveness later on to the game. Drums is what you get if you want to be effective there and now. That's exactly what he went for, and uh, he's trying to go for the aggressive play with Demon. Very cute play. I don't know if I actually think that this is the best way to play the Beastmaster, but a uh, 301. Who could complain, right? I'll have to jump on Admiral Bulldog in the bot lanes, and his travel are definitely worth it in that regard. Ooh, I suppose that EG are going to look towards a gank every single time Boots of Travel are up. Using Boots of Travel very, very aggressively. No Tide Hunter, however. They're not going to wait around. They're going to go straight in for the Roshan. No wards in the area for EG. 
And oh, spiderlings, you are so alive. They move away at the last second again. This is all just a ploy for EG to try to steal off. For no time to pick off Roshan before EG can get in there. Axes flew, but uh, Roshan did go down to the dire, and now Sven has a double life. Don't know if EG knew about that and chose not to do it. They didn't have any ward coverage. But I th th they definitely had an idea that that was happening. That is going to give Shadow Shaman his level 7. Maxed out on that Aether Shock. Uses wards for the first time there, I believe. Heisler going to go for a Maelstrom, actually. That is not the item that I thought he was going to go for. Trying to go for a little bit of magic damage. And you know what? I like that. The enemy team has quite a lot of armor. 16, 14... Uh, six plus however much uh, the war cry gives at its respective level. If you want to bypass that armor, you just go for the magic damage, get the maelstrom, turn it into a Mjolnir. Then it doesn't really matter how much armor you have because most of Fear's damage is going to be magic damage from the Light Sealer. It's a very uh, different way to play it. Not sure if I would. Well, it works. It works with the drum. A lot of moon speed, a lot of sticking power, and you get a lot of static electricity. Demon now smoked up, is gone for the Necro Book. He's going to try to use that to uh, hold down the mana pool of No Tide Hunter. And S4, you, my good sir, have got to get out of there. Starting to get surrounded. If you don't teleport, like in the next 10 seconds, you're dead. Oh, looks like you're dead anyway. Beat is going to run straight into S4. And Demon is right above him. There's the roar. Ice Path is going to set up with a Macro Pyre. S4 is going to burn and freeze and die. S4 dropping yet again. You're unfortunately not in the area to take advantage out of that with a killer assist or anything like that. In the meantime, Deo has been on this bot lane. Spent a lot of his gold. What does he get? He got a full BKB. Possibly also going to wield that gem. Get rid of some of the wards from the No Tide Hunter's side. No, it's not going to be that. Just a BKB, but 19 minutes. Hand of Midas, BKB on the Broodmother. Not bad. Could have been a lot worse considering the heroes that No Tide Hunter had to put up against her. Jo, but he's gonna turn around for the uh, Sven for a second. Eternal Envy taking a little bit of damage from EG, but not enough to actually get a kill. So EG with a six kill advantage, have a couple of towers in their favor as well. Plus a gem, plus a very very fine Broodmother. They're not looking too bad in this game. Let's see if Fear actually wants to turn his uh, Maelstrom into a full Mjolnir. If he wants to go for something like an Armlet. As I said before in the draft, no Tide Hunter do have a quite quite a bit of burst damage. If Life Sealer gets hit by an Illuminator, if Sven decides that Life Sealer has got to go, then this health pool is not going to survive for very long, even though he does have Feast. I still have reservations as to whether or not he'll be able to survive for long enough, and here we go, another Beastmaster, Naix, Gank. Are they going to go for S4? Why not, right? Oh, you already used the Surge, that's not what you want to have happen. Necrobook's a pop, and S4 is going to get shredded down. Unfortunate for him. He used to surge simply for mobility. Needed it to escape, although I don't think it would have made a difference. Bulldog with the relic up. So he's not doing too bad himself. It's going to still be a couple minutes before he can get that full radiance. And once he gets that, well, he's going to have to make use of it. So far, he hasn't had much space to make use of it. Demon in a little bit of trouble as Loda. Let's out that war cry. Admiral Bulldog is here as well. Loda's going to boost the travel away. Should be fine. He is going to be fine. Just the way EG are playing. Jo, always on this bottom lane. Always someone in the mid lane. Always someone in the top lane. Boots of travel on Lashrak as well. Not much farm space for no Tide Hunter. He's that Admiral Bulldog is forced into the jungle. And you know who's in the jungle? Life Sealer and Beastmaster. They're in the jungle. Spiderlings, and then look for Eternal Envy, but the Iron Shell and S4 is going to cancel all that out. Jo, sticking on this bottom lane, doing the Brood Mother thing. 2400 gold on him, a lot of CS. Most gold. Oh, Ice Path. Just barely out of range of Sven. Fortunate play from Vitas. He's going to be the straight Mjolnir for last year. Vitas knows he messed up. Is there any true sight? Eternal Envy does have a Sentry Ward, but Jo has a BKB. Eternal Envy, you have no way out of here. And S4 is uh, chilling by himself, not moving. He does have a lot of support coming in, and Jo has to peel off, or else he's going to have a very angry bear in his face. Here comes the bear right now, as well as the rest of the No Tidehunter squad. They really, really want this lane down. 
least extend some of the webs out. There's the armor from the war cry, and this tower doesn't stand a shot. The tower is going to drop despite the fortification. J.O. coming in around from the back. As his bead is, let's see if he's going to land an ice path this time. Not even going to cast it. The radiance on the bear is going to allow him to clear out the uh, broodmother. Spiderlings. It's going to be very helpful for him. Oh, demon. Very, very aggressive play from him with the gem as well. But you do not want to mess with this Beastmaster because you never know if there's a Lysler inside. Speaking of Lysler on the top lane, he's on the run. S4, is he going to get a surge on that bear? Yes, he is. The Radiance Burn is going to start right now. And Fear, does have the phase boost, does have the drums. Should make it to the tower unless he gets an entangle. First hit, no entangle. Second hit, no entangle. Third hit, no entangle. And the, they're still chasing. Surge onto Admiral Bulldog. And Fear going to turn straight around for Bulldog, but still surged up. And here comes Loda. He lands a storm hammer demon, going to stun Loda at the same time as he stuns him. Now there's an angry bear on that Beastmaster. Here comes Jo teleporting in as well. Mouth teleporting in from the back with that pulse of with the edict doing as much damage as he can. Jo taking a lot of damage as well. Loda pops off the BKB, but he has no way of actually capitalizing. Vita is going to get hexed up by Eternal Envy. The first time Eternal Envy actually showed his face, and that is going to be a kill onto Bdiz. Only casualty of this fight, surprisingly enough, actually. You'd expect someone to die. But lots of BKBs were used to very little effect, and... I really honestly think that was the first time that EG saw the Shadow Shaman. He didn't use the Serpent Wards to push down any towers, he used it for Roshan once, and that's pretty much it. Yet, yeah, Eternal Envy is still level 8. He's not doing all that poorly. He's still probably on the bottom. Oh no, he's not on the bottom. He's second. Aki's on the bottom. So not bad there, but uh, lots of preliminary BKB charges used by the Broodmother. Well, as by the Sven, I believe those are the 10 second charges. Yes, they were. Is, no, 8 second charge, okay. Not as bad for EG, but every second counts. Now, the Life Slayer does have his Mule near up. He's going to hold on to a Belt of Giant Strength, probably heading towards a Heaven's Halberd, actually. Would be a very good choice. S4 in a lot of danger once again. Here comes Demon with the Roar. S4 trying to surge himself out of here. Melk is going to land the Split Earth as well as everything else he has. S4 is going to barely make it out of there with a Blinding Flash by Aki. One more hit isn't going to be enough. Here comes Loda with the War Cry getting S done onto Demon. And the right click is going to start. No God Strength popping off just yet. There's the Drum Charge trying to allow them to catch up to Melk who is completely out of mana. Is there any teleportation coming? No. The only two people with the boost travel are down here on the spot lane. Although here comes B Diz. I don't know how he got to this area right now. He's going to fight off Eternal Envy 1v1. We'll keep an eye on that. Malk can try to teleport himself out of here. Loda with the hammer is going to hit onto Malk, plus the vacuum back. Malk is going to drop Bdiz on the run from Eternal Envy. Did not win that fight. The hex is going to happen. Eternal Envy is slowly going to let Bdiz escape. Regeneration rune picked up by Demon in the bottle. And Aki once again with the blinding flash pushing Demon into the shackle range. Ice Path is going to hit. Axe to fly as well. Eternal Envy taking a lot of damage from those spells. But Demon getting hexed up once again. Here comes Fear from the back end, though. Wall pulling Demon back into it. It's not going to be enough damage to actually kill him off. He and Demon, he and, uh, he and Beat is, I'm sorry, going to get out of there just fine. Here comes Fear with the drum charge, with the phase boots. Going to open up with the ra rage. One, two, three, four, five hits is going to kill Aki. And now S4 is in a little bit of danger. No more slows available. The Spiderlings are going to fly. The bottle charges, though, plus the four magic stick charges. He should be fine. Eternal Envy, though, not going to be as lucky as he does have a very, very angry life. So they're breathing down his back. But no, he's going to teleport out just in time. Not enough damage to cancel that off. The roar happened from Demon, who teleported into the front. S4 barely getting out of there. No, he's not. Beastmaster with the longest swipe. No, it was actually a uh, Necron unit picking up that kill. Back and forth battle. B Diz and uh, Melk somehow making it out of that sticky situation. Now the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane has gone down, they're going to keep on pushing, they don't, S4 is down, they don't have the wall available to them, but still with the horses on the other end, with the radiance on the bear, it's going to be very very hard for EG to breach the high ground. I suppose the uh, only options for them remain to be Roshan in this last tier 2 tower. Other than that, they need a m little bit more of a decisive fight if they want to push onto the high ground. Oh, it's actually going to be a basher, okay. Good choice. I always forget that basher is, you know, javelin belt of strength. In in my day, <laughs> it was, uh, what was it? Mithril Hammer, Gauntlet of Giant Strength, I think? Was that it? I, I, don't, I don't even know anymore. I never got a Badger, unless I was Troll Warlord. Then you get six of those puppies, and then you just go to town on everyone. Before Warlord had his uh, ultimate switch, when it was just him, that was ridiculous. I friggin' love that hero. Literally, you A move, and then cross your fingers. It's amazing. But enough about that. EG farming on their side of the jungle, and no Titans seem to be uh, 
wanting to do something. Asuka Madness is up on the Sven level 15, so he's almost at that magic 16 mark where Sven becomes an unstoppable beast. Roshan is going to spawn right now. No tide enter in the pit already, but this time, EG, they have a little bit more of a potential to actually hold this off this time. Jo on the front lines, going to lay down some webs for some vision, but instantly hexed up. Jo in a little bit of trouble. The horses are going to fly shortly. There's the wall of Epica plus vacuum pulling back, melting a huge amount of damage. And here is Jo, go, uh, float, I'm sorry, going toe to toe with Fear. Fear actually won that engagement. Aki is going to be brought down by Jo. Admiral Bulldog chasing after Beatus with the Radiance. He should be able to take the Chihiro kill, but at what cost here? Still around the Ice Path is going to hit as the last dying wish of the Chihiro. Now Bulldog is going to drop as well. Four down for no Tidehunter as S4 is the only one to make it out alive, dropping all the spells. No one on EG focused him down. But surprisingly, the Sven unable to kill off here. I do believe it was because the Life Stealer got first hit bash, which is uh, always kind of unfortunate. The Basher is going to let Fear stand toe to toe with that Sven. Because Sven does a lot of damage, but you know how much damage you do when you're stunned? Zero. You do zero damage. So no Tide Hunter letting that fight slip away from them. Not to say that their the future fights are are going to go the same way. I feel like that was a lot of things going the way of EG. Broodmother got out of there alive despite being initiated upon. EG were already uh, no Tide Hunter. I'm sorry. We're already roughed up a little bit from that Roshan. We'll see what happens later on. Fear is going to get a lot stronger. However, Loda, as well as Admiral Bulldog, are going to get a lot stronger as well. But, I don't know, once Fear gets that Abyssal Blade, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Sven. He wants to hit. That's all he wants to do. He wants to turn on everything and then smash his face on his keyboard until everyone's dead. But, uh, the guaranteed stun from Life Sealer is going to be incredibly useful. Where is Net Worth? That's a lot. What? <laughs> Look at these guys, they're so poor. Ho oh, ho. Yes, our support heroes can get the wards. Oh yes. Industry, industry. It's the lowly life of a support hero. But uh yeah. With the ice paths, they wouldn't have been getting these kills, right? Fear, does he have his abyssal blade yet? Another thousand gold. Yes, have that Aegis. So he's gonna look to use it within the next five minutes. Could mean a push on the high ground, or perhaps just this tier 2 tower. The easy pickings there. And looks like they're going to prep it. Are they going to head up here, though? S4 is around. Could send some ion shells down the lane, although Fear, probably not going to care all too much about that. Everyone else from No Tidehunter is around their base. Not sure who's the Pit Lord, V2, but was not watching. Pit Lord, in case you didn't know. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I guess he's talking about Aki. Pit Lord, in case you didn't know, is a Dota 1 hero who basically just has a whole bunch of uh, AoE spells that were pretty good if the enemies stood in them, but the enemies never stood in them. He had one that was a giant disable, which was kind of useful, but I don't know. Pit Lord just cleared off creep waves like nobody's business. It was insane. A lot of fun to play until the enemies decided that they could just kill you. Then, not so much. But EG applying pressure to the mid and top lanes. Jo might be in a little bit trouble as the war cry is let out by Loda. Going to clear off these spiderlings. The tier two on the top tower is going to drop. Going to be life to pick up that kill. And no tide hunter. Where are they going to go? Are they going to try to push down the mid lane? Creep wave being pulled by EG. Very very uh, strange tactic, and they let their creep wave slip on by. Not sure if that's going to pay off for them. But EG, they're all grouped up here. They want to get a pick off for they breach the high ground. With the horses with the ion shells, it's going to be too much if they decide to straight push it in. Missile blade now on fear. It could be a hawk gank, one of the uh, one of those maneuvers that they've been doing for a good part of this game. But EG, they're looking very, very good this game. Now the gold's firmly in their advantage, experience earned as well. And this time, no tide hunter don't have that bounty hunter to give them all that track gold. Broodmother even picking up a basher. That is going to be a lot, a lot of stuns for no tide hunter. Against no tide hunter. BKBs are not. And Sven's DPS is going to drop so very quickly. And once that BKB runs out, they have to deal with a lot of stuns plus the incapacitating bite. 40% miss chance is no joke. Especially when you're Sven, you need every single hit to heal yourself with that mask of madness. So EG just taking their time. Demon playing very aggressively though, gonna pop off his necro units. 
Eternal Envy looking for something with a dust. Not going to find anything. I feel like No Tide Hunter kind of used, could have used any hero but the Shadow Shaman. The Shadow Shaman really hasn't done much all this whole game. Level 9, he used his wards like twice. The tier 2 towers are all still up for EG, plus a tier 1 tower. When you have a Shadow Shaman, that should not happen. I'm using those wards to push down tower, but at this point, level 1 Serpent wards, pretty much nothing. Smoke now, I believe that was in Vision of EG, although their behavior is going to reveal whether or not it was. Looks like they did not know about it. Demon is going to find Eternal Envy. Roar to open up, and Lysa there to kill him in two hits. Loda, stunned by the Abyssal Blade. They're going to bring down the Sven before he has a chance to do anything. He's going to pop up the BKB and run. Blinding Flash is going to push them all back, as is the Wall of Replica going to go up. S4 going to get worked on by J.O. Permabash. He's not moving anywhere. Fear is going to take down Loda, and I do believe that was the decisive fight that, no t that EG wanted, that they needed to breach the high ground. Fear still very much alive, still has the Aegis for uh, another minute, so he could push suicidally for another minute. Jay on the front lines, they're just waiting for one more creep wave. Beat is the only one to take a lot of damage from there, but Demon with fear inside him. A very, very unpleasant surprise for no tide hunter. Horse is going to wind up and fire. This tower is going to go down. Bear on the front lines with the Radiance, with the Ion Shell is going to do a little bit of damage to the enemy side, but he's going to drop instantly. Is there a resummon? No, Bulldog is trapped in the wards. He's going to get bashed down. No teleportation for you. A little bit of a misplay by Eternal Envy in the Shadow Shaman pick so far. Not working out for them. That's going to mean bottom racks is probably going to mean mid racks as well. They do not have any other damage. Those they, yes, they do have the Illuminate, but uh, no. But Keeper of Light could only do so much against the Life Stealer as well as a stacked Broodmother. So EG, making this game work, the slow and steady ganking and pushing train. And here remarking about the unfortunate play of Eternal Envy. Sad faces all around, all you can do. There we go. That's going to be mid racks, it's going to be in top racks as well. So there's another 35 seconds where the Lone Druid is not here. Eternal Envy, though, calls the game. And S4, just like how this game started, it's going to end with a kill on the darks here. That's going to be it, guys. EG, so far 2-1 up above No Tide Hunter in the Absolute Arena. King of the Hill, best of five. So if they win the next game, that is going to be it for them. They're going to be the champions for, what, two, three, three times? Three-time champions of this uh, tournament? It's kind of a King of the it's King of the Hill format, so I guess you can't really call them the champions of it. They're like you know, the kings of the hill. That's just what they are. But anyway, no Tide Hunter, they have had enough. And for some reason, EG, they're farming. So that's that's cool. But yes, this game is very much over. So thanks for watching, guys. Cast wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but still, we have uh, quite a few games to go, I believe. At least one more. Not actually sure how many, because because why would I know that stuff? That would require work. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this cast, <laughs> Beat is still salty about this ice path right here. Not salt. That That is not the correct usage of the word, is it? I don't know. He's mad. Er, not really mad, even. He's he, he disappointed. Kind of doesn't have the same effect, doesn't it? Roaring in the face of that dark here. If you enjoyed this cast, then please like, subscribe, let me know that I should, uh, what you guys want to see. If you didn't enjoy this cast, then I'm still trying to get into the swing of things. The future ones will be a lot better. I guarantee it with a, you know, 80%-ish guarantee. That's going to be it for me, guys. Looking forward to game number four. GG.